This is Michael T. Thank you for being with us this morning. To all our listeners, I would invite you to go to bookpartypodcast.com. That's bookpartypodcast.com. Hit that subscribe tab on top and scroll down to the icon of your choice where you can find us on one of your favorite platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, or Odyssey. You can download and follow us there. Please don't forget to sign up for our latest newsletter and get the latest information on our upcoming shows. Today, I would like to introduce our guest, Dark Joseph Ravine, and his book, Watch Out, It's Nolan. Dark Joseph Ravine is a Canadian influencer, actor, and online entrepreneur, best known for spreading positive motivation and his movement kindness for success. As a social media influencer, his life mission is to promote kindness and positivity to make the world a better place to live in. Joseph, why don't you take it from here, fill in the blanks a bit, and tell our listeners about yourself. Yep, so I am known as Dark Joseph Ravine. I dedicate my whole life to promoting positivity, kindness, and helping people. And I try to create more you know, understanding between people as much as possible that way you know, they can hopefully live better lives and they can hopefully, you know, find new paths in life to be happier. And the whole idea, my whole goal as an influencer is to remove the negativity from people's lives and to put more positivity. That way they're happier. Of course, I'm not going to please everybody, but I'm dedicated to do it to as many people as I can. Yeah, that's wonderful. So in your journey as an author, are you a self-publishing type author or is your journey with an agency? So actually I own my own agency. So I am would say I'm self-published with everything I do. And um, I'm also my own marketer. So I know how to make myself known and famous. I have my own team of people that does that. And so I always think it's a great idea to try to do things more on your own than to try to rely on other people. Cause some people may not have the skills and knowledge to do certain things. So I try my best to see if I can do everything on my own. And this is me. So do you do it like an, do you do it like indie style or do you collaborate anything such as your covers or, you know, your artwork that's inside your book? Cause you've got great artwork. Yeah. So yeah, I have a copy of your book here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have a team of people, you know, and people we reach out to and we work with, you know, you know, this is an illustrated by Elisa Schwartz who made all the, um, the pictures and everything. And so, yeah, we have a whole group of people with publicists, marketers, advertisers. We have people that, you know, can put the image out into the public. I can also help other people become famous and known and everything. Of course, we are exclusive with who we work with. You know, people have to be accepted and taken on board. Just like on my TV show, the Dark Joseph Ravine show, they have to fill out an application and the whole team has to accept it, you know. So editing, formatting, and, and all yes. of that as well. Yes. Okay. So when you're writing this book, it's a children's book, obviously, and it's about bullying, but is there, there's got to be, you know, there's different moments when you're writing a book. Is there a worst author moment when you were writing this book? I probably would say that there hasn't been a worst author moment because I feel like even the worst times will always be for the best and make you stronger as a person. And I don't think that there's ever a worst anything. I think that even though there's good and bad in all situations of life, I always think that no matter what, everything is going to be for the best. And we're all going to face struggles one way or another. So I try to look at the positive as much as possible. Okay. So let's look at a, maybe an epiphany moment at some point, anytime we're writing a book, I mean, I've written a few of them at some point, no matter what you're doing, a light bulb may go off in your head and like, wow, oh man, I got to write that down. This will work great for the book. Do you have a moment like that? I absolutely do have moments like that, but to tell you the truth, what I always believed is no matter what you do, what you say, what you write, good or bad, you know, happy, sad, whatever it is that you, you do, I don't think it would necessarily influence people's opinions of you or increase opportunities. I mean, you have a chance to do that if you do good things, 
but I don't believe that, you know, it would change how people preserve you or what they think of you. I think that what people think of you or what you do is something they have to naturally decide. So I just kind of go with instinct and like let nature. Well, I don't necessarily, I didn't necessarily mean it in that way. I mean, mm -hmm. what I'm talking about is an epiphany moment that you think of something for the book that if you don't write it down, that may fade, you know, with the next hour that you should have wrote it down because the clarity of it, when you thought of it, you, you can write it down now so you can get it into the book, you know, two hours from now when you're ready to actually sit down and start writing. Definitely. You and understand what I mean? There? That's the whole point of why you write books as well. You, you preserve your ideas and you, you know, you keep them on paper and you decide if a certain idea would work well for the book. Yeah. So I do, I'm sorry. I think I misunderstood what you said there. I thought you were talking more about, you know, like the depth of opinions, not necessarily, you know, having something good and then forgetting about it and letting it fade away. So yeah, you no, are just that, that light bulb. Yeah, that light bulb that goes off says, where's a piece of paper? I got it, man, yes. I got to write this down. Right exactly. Now. That's always you a know? good idea to write down opinion, like your thoughts of, of your book that you want to write on, write about and things like that. And then that way, because if you ever plan to go back, then at least you have an idea and you never know what idea could hit you big one day, you know? Right. So let's go to today. Sure. What has you the most excited about now, most fired up about right now today? So my most fired up moment is definitely my TV show, The Dark Joseph Ravine Show. Because over there, I'm talking about inspirational leaders who could also be authors or, you know, influencers or people who've made positive impacts in the world and people who are dedicated to helping the future generation. Like my book, Watch Out, It's Nolan, it dedicates to also helping the future generation be treated better so that they grow up to be happier as adults. So I'm all about positive changes and helping the world become better. So anytime I see somebody working on positive changes and helping people, like that's what I love. And that's everything I do is targeted at that positive changes. Okay, great. This is Michael T. And I thank you for being with us today. To all our listeners, I would invite you to go to bookpartypodcast.com. That's bookpartypodcast.com. Hit that subscribe tab on top. Scroll down to the icon of your choice, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, or Odyssey. You can find us on your favorite platform. Download us there. And please leave a review. Don't forget to sign up for our newsletter and get the latest information for our upcoming shows. Now, Joseph, we're going to enter the lightning round. And this is four pointed questions for four pointed answers. Sure. Let's do it. Before you, I'm sorry. Let's do it. <laughs> Before you ever became an author, what was holding you back from becoming an author? I feel like when you're young, you kind of don't really know what you really, really want in your life yet. And so I think that sometimes it does take time to figure things out. I always think that, you know, most children in their 19, 20, 21, 22, you know, I feel like, you know, they don't know what they want in their life yet. So they're going in lots of different directions. And I also think that, you know, even for me, I love to do a lot of things, not just author, you know, I love to work, I love to do business, I love to do acting, singing, writing, you know, TV host, you know, I always believed in, in working hard, like I love hard work, and I love being a workaholic, like in general, I, I feel yeah. accomplished when I work hard, and I see my work getting done and success and things like that. Right, okay. Well, in your writing, what was the best advice you've ever received? One of the best advice I've ever received in my writing is always be yourself and say what you are truly passionate about and what you really believe in. And don't just write something of somebody else's because this world is looking to see the unique and authentic you, not an imitation of you. So make sure you truly your very best to be unique and be yourself.
and not just with writing, with everything in your life. Right. Okay. Well, why don't you share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success? Personal habits is I would probably say is thinking of new ideas every second. If this idea doesn't work, what's the next one? Let's think, Oh, let's think of this, you know? So it's more about having creative ideas and thinking about every single idea in the moment, you know, trying to figure out which one works best. And then you keep thinking of new ideas and then boom, you find the best one. And so that's what I do. I try to think quick in the moment when it comes to thinking of ideas. Cause you know, I love doing that. So your mind is moving all the time, a thousand miles a minute. Yes. hundred <laughs> percent. And it's, but it's staying in there. It's staying in there. It's just moving yeah. a lot. It doesn't relax. Okay. Maybe for our listeners, you could share an internet resource that you use, uh, you know, for writing. I don't really use any personal resources, but what I would recommend to the writers personally is if writing is something you're really passionate about, maybe write a few poems or a few books or something like that and get people to review it and get people to think like get a team of people to give you positive feedback on something. And if they have good feedback and they say, this is really amazing, you know, then bring it to more people and more people. Cause you never know what opportunity can pass you by in the writing industry. You know, sometimes people say you can be the best writer and get no opportunities, or you could be the worst writer and get millions of opportunities. So, you know, I always tell everybody, take advantage of your opportunities while you got them. Right. Okay. Well, I've got your book right here. I got it too. <laughs> okay. So watch out. It's Nolan. So here we're going to enter the grand finale. Yes. So what I'd like you to do for our listeners is a way they can get in touch with you, maybe follow you or find your book. Okay. Then I want you to take your time because you talk kind of fast, actually. Oh, I, I do all the Take time. your time and just tell our listeners all about your book. Sure. Yeah, so my book, Watch Out, It's Nolan, has what is a five-time award-winning book from the Outstanding Creator Awards, and it's dedicated to teach our future generation as well as the educators of the future generation, like teachers, parents, counselors, to be gentle and careful with children because they are delicate and they are our future generation. And that if we want them to grow up to be happier, we got to be good to them. We got to treat them well. We also have to um, make sure that we're mindful about understanding them and knowing their background stories and where each and every one of them come from, because that can make a huge difference. Um, yeah. So I have a lot of platforms. If you look up on darkjosephravine.com, you know, they can find out everything about me there. I do multiple things in just a book and I'm always excited to get to meet new people and talk to people. And I love people in general. So I'm always open for feedback and, you know, people mm -hmm. want to get my book. It's available on Amazon. There's other book outlets that sell it, you know, and it's all going pretty well. And so I look forward to hearing from people. Well, let's hear about just the book itself. Yeah, so Let's what hear happens about Watch is Out Nolan. Nolan. Let's hear. Yeah, so what happens is Nolan, he's always late for school and his parents aren't happy with him. And so because his parents aren't happy with him, you know, um, this little, this green whiz named Bolton, he makes all kinds of bad things happen to the parents as well as the teachers and the students for picking on Nolan. And Nolan is very unhappy and sad. And so when he goes to school, and he's bullied by his classmates. The most popular girl, Edie, is striked by Bolton as well with a snowball, I believe that is. Yep, a snowball. That's and right. so what happens as time goes on, everybody who picks on Nolan is getting mistreated and abused. And then there comes a time where Nolan says, I am being mistreated by my class. And because I'm being mistreated, that's why I don't want to come to school and I'm being late and I'm behaving the way I'm behaving. So since they found out his background story, that's when they all decided to change. And they told the class at the end of my book, if you see here, it says, be kind. So everybody got along well, including Edie. 
And so that's kind of the idea behind the book is that Nolan wasn't understood and that's why he was behaving bad. And when a kid in real life is misunderstood like I was when I was a child, I behaved bad. And so that's why the book, that's where I come from when I say why my book is about teaching our educators and parents and kids, you know, please be good to the people of our future generation, because that's why sometimes they behave bad because they're misunderstood and they don't know who they can talk to. And so that's why I made this book, because I've always been so passionate about helping people be understood. You know, imagine living your whole life being misunderstood and falling into depression and becoming a very negative person and being tra traumatized, you know, so that's why, that's why I made this book to teach people that, to teach people about understanding that if you're not good to people, how bad it can impact a child. So I hope that my book makes an impact, a positive one in the world. Yeah, because they were giving him the wrong answers. Just, Oh, you're being bullied. Oh, come on. Just, you know, let it basically let it bounce off. You know, yeah, exactly. It'll go. Exactly. They're just giving him all the wrong answers. Just go to school. Just basically just take it, mm -hmm. you know, type thing. And nobody was doing anything about it. Exactly. Even the, the staff my life. Weren't listening to him. The parents weren't listening to him proper. The, the teachers, the principal, everybody. And because the girl was the, the, uh, most popular one that was kind of leading the kids in his bullying. Nobody wanted to believe she was the one doing it. Well, yeah, you know, because yeah. she could do no wrong. And it finally just turned out to be, you know, just to an act of kindness. And you can turn everything around with an act of kindness. Act of kind and also understanding like the teachers finally realized that he's behaving bad because of the bat, the negativity going on in the class. And since that day, he, when they realized that, he started coming to school early. Parents were happy with him. The teachers were happy with him. And he started behaving better. So you see, that's... Yeah, he not, only had a, you know? he not only had a great time playing soccer, he actually had a great time. Uh, the other kids had a great time playing with him. Yeah, for sure. Once they finally allowed him to play, everybody had a lot of fun and they realized you know, what are we doing here? You know? So it just turned out to be a lot better off for him with those couple acts of kindness and stop picking on him. Mm -hmm. So no, it was a really good book. I really enjoyed reading that. Thank you. And it's, it's not just the children that can take note of this, but it's like you said, the parents, the teachers, the yes, educators 100%, because can take you know note what? of this as well. You know what? Even in my day, I would always think in my mind when you could have made the situation better, why did you make it worse? And why did you just keep making things worse and worse and worse to the point where my behavior got worse and worse and worse. So that's kind yeah, of why I wrote this book, you know, because the people yeah, he, weren't educated and professional. He's the and one getting ready to get suspended from school. Yeah. Yeah. He's the one getting ready to get suspended from school from being late all the time. Yeah. Not them for doing the bullying, you know, it was, for sure. uh, it really too bad, but it turned out, it turned out really well. So it was a really good book. I think it's, uh, certainly something I would recommend for, for people to read, especially educators, parents, Yeah. uh, you know, take a good look at it, take a good, uh, look at yourselves. Yeah. And, and that's, that's really, really good way. And above anything, I'm, I'm, I'm not making this book, you know, just for, you know, promotion or for money or for things like that. I really am passionate about making our future generation better and understood, you know, because I was so misunderstood as a kid. I couldn't speak to anyone, not my parents, not my teachers, not kids, nobody. I was like all alone in the world for many, many years of my life. Right. So, you know, please don't let anybody go through what I went through. Okay. Well, Dark Joseph Ravine, yeah. we thank you so much for being here with us today and opening thank up to so us. Much. And I'm sure our listeners appreciate this too. Yes. Thank you so Again, much. This Michael. is Michael T. And I thank you for being with us. To all our listeners, I would invite you to go to bookpartypodcast.com. Hit that subscribe tab on top. Scroll down to the icon of your choice. Find us on one of your favorite platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeart Radio, or Odyssey. You can download and follow us there, and please don't forget to give us a review. Book Party Podcast is owned and powered by MTM Legacy Publishing. This is Michael T., and we're signing off. 
You must not miss our next episode as we delve into a world of inspiration, entertainment, and thought-provoking insights. Join Michael T. on the next Book Party podcast and experience a new adventure, a new story, and a complete immersion into the world of Pages Unveiled, Chronicles of the Writing Journey.